Well, hello everyone. I know it's been a, uh, a little over a month since I cut a video out, but I tell you, it's just been so busy. I do have a lot of videos in the queue to do. Well, it's already done. I just got to edit and upload it. But, uh, you know, still just getting the time to do that has been a bit of a chore. So, uh, on the bench is this beautiful Holocrafters. It's the Model S108. And this was sent in for a overhaul by a viewer but today we're not going to overhaul because i have got to order some parts and stuff but i want to go in on some uh, tech tips for you on uh, different things to look for when you're going to overhaul a receiver like this or, or any type of transmitter or, or whatever it is that you're putting on your bench so let's say that you uh, went to a ham fest or a swap meet or even picked up something off an eBay uh, what is you know standard practice for going through it and looking at it and determining what needs to be done well first tip is uh, once you get it home and get it on your bench or unbox it or whatever you want to look over cosmetics and that is a real important thing to do because a lot of time the cosmetics will tell you what the type of shape that this unit that you're going to work on is in now looking at this you can just see it's it looks real good but there are little hidden things here and there you know that uh, you can find that will tell you more about how the inside is probably going to look so uh, let's get a real good shot and look this thing over and, and see just what we can you know find out about it on the outside very first and you know important step before you can get started on the radio is to download the manual read it understand it know what's going on you can also go online use references online uh, a lot of times if you google Holocrafters S108 You'll find people that probably have restored them. You'll see some of the pitfalls that they have run across or stumbled across. You know, that'll help you along the way. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's a few videos on YouTube, which is fortunate. But unfortunately, there's none on repairing this unit. So, uh, you won't always find videos online on something that you're repairing and that's one of the things i always love to do if i get a piece of equipment in i've never worked on it before i will go to youtube i'll look through there see if there's been any repair videos that will teach me a little knowledge of what i'm dealing with plus read the manual reading the manual will save you lots and lots and lots of trouble you figure out that you know, if I only would have read the manual, this wouldn't happen. So we're going to take a real close look at the outside of it and just see if anything is, uh, stands out and looks at us, you know, and see if we see any, any problems from shipping or, um, you know, setting up or whatever. And one of the first things you do want to look for is rust. Because whenever you find rust, then you know that most of the time the environment it's been sitting in was a bit harsh. But if, as we look through this radio and, and look around it, you can see our dial face is just in excellent condition. There's no uh, lettering missing. No cracks in the uh, front glass. We can see that uh, the lettering on the chrome plate is uh, in real good shape. And always, always pay attention to around these screws. Of 
because you can always tell you know how much work has been done by the shape of the screws or what the screws look like and in this case you know I'm not seeing very little marring or anything on them which means it don't look like it's been in too much also around the uh, the toggle switches if you look around it for rust corrosion see one little nick well that actually wiped off so that was probably a piece of dust we can see that the uh, controls are a, a bit dirty on the outside these knobs and the uh, red line is not quite as defined as it should be panel across no rust you see no wiring around the, uh, the knobs everything looks real good a lot of times especially on the uh, band selector you'll see where people has turned it and they let their fingers I don't, I don't know why they do that but they let their fingers touch the front bezel and you keep turning this and you know your finger wears the lettering and the paint off nick around that screw is that just nope just dirt probably from the packing material or whatever see something down here on the front of this one yeah that came off too All right, but someone asked me uh, why don't I use cordless screwdrivers when I'm taking screws out of this equipment you know it's a lot faster you know it'll make the job faster well there's reasons for that and now I do have plenty of cordless screwdrivers but these being standard screws uh, a cordless screwdriver can get away from you and you end up scratching or mowing up the front panel that is why I always like to just grab a regular screwdriver, you know, that fits the, uh, the screw. And uh, you can turn the screw without mowing up the front of the uh, unit. So, yeah, that's why I stay away from cordless screwdrivers and vintage equipment like this. Now, if it's somewhere that's you know some of the chassis or whatever yeah that's that's okay but not on painted and uh, finished surfaces never use a uh, cordless screwdriver so you know after looking at the front we can see it's that it's mostly just dirty there is a uh, little spot down here that uh, I'm seeing just right here it looks like uh, I don't know if it's from liquid or what it is but once we get the radio out of the case we can look at that better you know when you see stuff like that you want to you know maybe water was poured inside and it this is where it ran out at or is there a capacitor that's leaking it's wax and it's oozing out or a transformer or whatever so you know keep in mind when you're seeing stuff like that so when you do pour the unit out of the case you can investigate it further We'll uh, go on around, we'll look at the sides, and you can see it's just in beautiful shape, a little scratch right here, not bad, we'll get on to the back, we can also see the inside, we can notice that everything is uh, still present. See our uh, terminal strip for the antenna. It's got a little corrosion on it, but that's normal. Standard two wire power cord, and you see there's no fuse. Now, the way that they built this radio, it'll be easy to put a fuse holder in the back, but we'll get into talking about that in just a little bit more. Looking on the inside, we can see 
there's no dust that can be seen. Uh, I see no liquid has been spilt just by peeking in there. It's kind of, you know, hard to see. We see some uh, tags on the inside are still present and not gone. But it's looking good. No rust on the transformer. And, you know, this is telling me that this radio has been stored in a good dry place. Going on around to this side. Same as the other side. And we'll take a peek across the top. And the top looks real good. A little bit better angle on it. We can see some, you know, fine surface scratches. That's normal. There's an area right here where it looks like somebody had something round sitting. Maybe it was a magnetic or whatever. There's a little, I can't tell if it's a scratch. Yeah, you can see it now, right here. Something has sat on the top of it and uh, has marred it. But we'll just go ahead and check that out real quick and see if it's a, uh, actually a scratch or just something on it. Little armor all on the rag. Yeah, we can see that is actually a scratch. A lot of it came out then, but you know it's it's still present. So yeah, something something it looks like almost something that was magnetic was stuck up here at one time. Look at our speaker grill. little something in this hole and you can see there's a paint chips around this hole back here no no big deal you know you don't really see it unless you're looking for it and one little nick in the paint over here like something dropped down on it and just took a little paint off of it but anyway, when I get one in, this is this is the stuff that I'm looking for on the outside. I want to see that, uh, you know, what kind of shape it's in. Because looking at the shape of the outside will tell you a lot about how the inside is going to look and what you're going to find. And in this, I'm thinking that the inside is going to be in pristine condition. Uh, it doesn't look like this radio has been took apart and worked on a lot, or if it has, whoever did it, did an excellent job. Second tip, after you check the uh, cosmetics out, is powering up this old equipment. Now, I know that the owner that had this has been using this radio, it has been plugged in, powered up, and ran, but if you buy this from a ham fest, or eBay you do not know the condition and as you've seen in the back there was not a fuse holder so you're not sure if there's a fuse in it or not and so to verify that you know look at the schematic you can see our AC plug comes in goes through a switch and goes directly to the circuit there is no fuse in it whatsoever so uh, okay I read a lot of stuff on the internet where people just say they just plug it in and hope for the best and uh, I have even heard of people say I've never had a problem doing that but if there's anything wrong in this radio you could burn up the transformer uh, short out the tubes or you know blow the capacitors out of it without even uh, knowing that it's happening and once you see the smoke come out it may be too late uh, I mean you blow up this transformer and you're going to be in the market trying to find one that will uh, go back in and replace the one you have and some of this stuff is hard to find the correct transformer so you know I don't take t chances in just plugging up something I know nothing about and, and turning the switch on I just don't like doing that it's, it's not safe practice. It's 
too easy to get the correct uh, tools that you need to uh, power up something like this. Got the unit up on the side and looking at the bottom of it. And again, you know, you don't see a whole lot of uh, bad stuff. There's a bit of uh, something going on right here. It looks like it's coming off. Again, a little bit of uh, armor all. Wipe over it and see. And yeah, most of that come off, so no problems. Look down here at this uh, crack where the uh, two pieces of metal are put together. You can see a little something right here. And uh, it's almost got a sticky substance to it. Let's see what happens here when we wipe it with a little bit of armor all. I'm oh, sticking this one away, but the uh, the discoloration is still there almost looks like maybe something you know like I said had leaked up on this ledge and pulled out I'm not seeing it back here nowhere so maybe it's not internal to the receiver you can see our Hallicrafters tag is still on the bottom a lot of times you'll find these already gone cause this paper will deteriorate over time you can see it's got the original rivets in it still holding it on so there's several ways to power up an old rig one of them that I use is this old power stat very active transformer and this is good up to 10 amps it has an internal HRC fuse behind this cover for 10 amps and you simply plug it in and start increasing the voltage now, without anything else in line, you can't really see what's going on. So, you know, if you just plug it in and start cranking this thing up without having something to monitor what's happening, uh, about all you're doing is just looking for when the smoke is going to start coming out of your device on the test. So, if you're going to use a Variat like this, just put a voltmeter on the high voltage side of the rectifier tube before you bring it up then you can monitor and see if that high voltage starts coming up if you if you don't see any high voltage coming up then you know something's wrong back back down on your voltage but don't everybody have a very act transformer and it would be nice to have one that has the uh, the voltage and current meters in it that way you can see everything at one time but you know by hooking a vacuum tube voltmeter up or, or a DMM or whatever you got you know laying around on the secondary side of the transformer you can see quickly if anything is happening and you can just turn it back down but again you know don't everybody have one uh, a lot of people that's getting into it may not have the extra money to go out and purchase one so what I use in series with this is a current limiting device and this is a simple device that you can build for under 20 bucks and it is a dim bulb tester and this is about as simple as you can get and I would recommend that even if you don't have a Variac Transformer to use one of these and you can go to Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, any of the uh, electrical stores and you can buy every part that you need. Now the cord just come off a piece of uh, discarded electronic equipment but I bought the socket, the box, switch and receptacle from Lowe's very cheap and it does all you need to do you plug it in 
turn the switch on plug your device in and when you flip the switch on that device if there's anything wrong with that uh, has you know any shorts or something pulling too many amps your light bulb is going to come on real bright because this will not work this light bulb will not light up unless it sees a heavy load on the output okay so uh, you know how does a current limiter work well let's simulate that this is a good unit that we're going to plug into our current limiter plug that in I got two 100 ohm 3 watt resistors connected in series set them over the cycle they will get a little warm and we'll just connect this into the circuit when we turn the switch on we can see our bulb is glowing just a little bit and we can pretty much say that is a good unit the radio does not have any shorts um, you know if you ohm across the power lead of a receiver or a transmitter you can get a low resistance and that is what's causing this light bulb to light up but as you notice it was dim so let's say for some strange reason that the power transformer is shorted or you got rectifier diodes that are shorted or this um, a blown capacitor and it's acting like a low ohm resistor to ground I'm going to just short the output and when we turn the unit on you can see now our lamp is at full brightness so that is absorbing the load that it's picking up without blowing anything and that's how a current limiter works your device under test actually becomes a variable switch for our lamp and uh, when you short across these terminals it's going to put full load on the lamp now this is a crude drawing of uh, exactly how the inside of our current limiter looks we come off our plug that goes into your wall outlet on the hot side it goes through the switch through the lamp and then over to the hot side of the receptacle the neutral just goes straight through to the receptacle so to get this lamp to turn on all you got to do is short across the receptacle and that's going to put full power to the lamp when you first power up a, a tube rig it's going to probably brighten the bulb up for just a second then you're going to see that um, bulb start dimming down some and that's because it's you know absorbed the load and it's leveling off and the high voltage has come up now you can put a another a second switch in your circuit to go across the uh, the lamp and what that would do is bypass your current limiting so when you brought it up on current limiting and you see that everything's okay you can flip the other switch which will short this out and put full power now this is going to drop your voltage a bit probably you know five to ten volts coming out the uh, receptacle so now you can with that other switch in line you can go full power to your device in the test okay I'm gonna go ahead and kill the uh, workbench lights I've got the uh, unit plugged into our current limiter here um, as you can see and what I'm going to do I'll go ahead and turn the power switch on and then I'm going to flip the current limiter on 
now you see the lamp came up bright and then went dim that was caused of the initial load coming on and you know we're sitting here we're looking at it we're monitoring the current and we already got a response from the uh, radio and it's warming up and it's going to continue to get warm i think by the end of the game you have to understand now this game's going to end around and while you're testing you know just keep an eye on the lamp and make sure it doesn't start going you know getting brighter then you know that that's a capacitor failing but as i said i already know this this unit is working Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the unit out of this case. We've got several screws around the front. Um, whenever you're working on something like this, it looks so good. Make sure you got it on something that can't scratch it up. You know, just I have this uh, self-healing cutting mat that I picked up yesterday. Just have to put it on the bench and get away with the old one I have now. We see we have five screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the screws out and we'll get the unit out of the case. Okay, well, since I got the unit out of the case, the third part is inspection. And that's going through and just looking over everything and make sure that uh, Everything is still intact. You know, you don't see any rust, any broken wires, um, damaged parts, or excessive overheating or anything. Now, you can see this unit has all the original Halicrafters tubes. All eight of them are branded by Halicrafters. So, they look like it still has the original tubes. We can see one electrolytic cap. So, three section, 30, 10, and 10. And I think they're 400, 450 volts. Yeah, 450 volts. So we have a three-section cap. You can see our main tuning cap, our band spread tuning cap. Well, actually, that's backwards. Actually, this is the main. Radio is a little bit different than most of your typical layout. The small dial on the front is your main and the big long analog dial is your band spread now it looks fairly clean in here uh, you know just just dust so i think this is going to clean up nicely uh, if we look at the front panel we can see some fingerprints around now this could be from way back when this thing was built and uh, over the years you know little oxidized oxidation has gotten in it you can see it turning white up there and it's also on my finger and that's just normal oxidation of this uh, metal but you know when the guys touched it at the front the fingerprints was already there and now that it's uh, oxidized you can see where the oil on that finger actually uh, kept it from oxidizing at that point so you know the dry metal with fingerprints on it leaves oil so it oxidized around it so you know, looking at this, I don't see where anybody has been in and changed anything. You know, if you would think if tubes have been changed, they would not be branded Halicrafter. So, I'm going to suspect that this is the uh, original tubes in this set. I'm looking at the there's two dial strings and just looking at them, the dial strings are nice and tight. I don't see any fraying or weak points in the dial string itself we'll have to get more into looking at that uh, what I do see is uh, interference points and let me uh, get you a little bit closer in on that where you can see now you can see this uh, stood here with the dial string is wrapped around there's no type of bearings or anything so this this shaft is just riding in these holes but filling the controls there's a little bit of wiggle in them not much so those are areas that will need to be uh, cleaned 
uh, it does feel a little tight on the band spread the maintaining feels real good no problems with it but the uh, the band spread is a little tight but you know it does have a whole lot more area to go on I can see that uh, our pulleys are turning on both ends so we're going to have to work on lubricating that and this main gear that's right down in here has a lot of uh, black grease on it so all that's going to have to be cleaned out and reloaded and you know then clean our variable capacitors so that and lube them so they'll turn freely so looking at the top side of it it looks really great this radio look like it's had a good life uh, this one lamp is burnt looking so it looks like this lamp here may be out I did not see that light up I did however see the other two lamps lit up so we'll have to go ahead and just replace all three lamps so looking underneath the bottom of it I'm just glancing around and I have seen no signs of any work whatsoever uh, if you remember in the middle up here we saw something that looked like it had dripped I see nothing in this area that has leaked no capacitors that has leaked so that was something that was probably pretty much uh, spilt here on the front and just ran down and ran through probably a uh, soft drink or, or something but yeah I'm not seeing anything that would came out of the uh, unit itself that has leaked also if you look you see lots of those reddish pink capacitors and those looks like tiny cheese to me Yep, and you can see they are tiny chief capacitors. Now those things have to go because we know there's nothing but paper caps in a molded shell. And if they haven't failed yet, they will. And they are probably leaky. The radio seems to work pretty good, but you'll see that uh, you'll get a lot better performance by getting these old caps out because you know if you got a bypass cap you know it's not so bad but if you got a cap feeding in another circuit um, no DC should be passing in the cap and the cap is leaky it's going to allow DC current to go through and actually put uh, DC on the grid of the next tube which is going to bias that tube differently make that tube run hot and not work as efficient as it should and probably for long it will take the tube out along with the capacitor so just looking over at the schematic here we can see there's three IF transformers in here and uh, I can tell that this is a single conversion superheterodyne circuit and it operates on uh, 455 kilocycles but we can also see if I zoom in on this that there are capacitors in the bottom of these transformers and pretty much it's going to be silver micro capacitors so you know there is a chance of having uh, silver micro disease we'll have to look on that when we go into restoring this rig this radio was made between 59 and I think 63 if I remember correctly um, yeah between 1959 1963 it's four band unit covers from 0.538 kilohertz already up to 34 megahertz covers AM CW and uh, it weighs in at about 28 pounds so it's a bit of a hefty little kit
So back on to inspection, you know, you're just looking to see if you see any resistors that is heated up, you know, uh, any of these transformer cores that are burnt or black. And uh, we're really not seeing any of that. It Everything looks good. I doesn't, you know, not seeing any wiring that's, uh, that's cracked or, or frayed or in a place where anything can short out the old cloth cover where it's coming out of the transformer look excellent no problems there uh, I am seeing a second electrolytic capacitor down here in the bottom right here and it's probably in the audio stage so that's two electrolytic caps that'll have to be replaced along with all these uh, tiny chiefs and you know you can replace them with either orange drops or polyesters styrene uh, type of uh, tubular caps um, a few of the old domino mica caps most of the time you find no problems with these in a circuit like this there's a a few of them in here and we can come on up and we can see our IF and RF and antenna adjustments all up on this end and you know when we're looking we're looking to see if there's any uh, screws has fell out of these uh, tuning capacitors and everything is looking good no rust around them no discoloration of the mica underneath of it so all that looks real good um, you will know that some of these slugs most of the time, you know, you'll have a tuning cap and then a slug, and all the slugs are waxed in. You can actually see the uh, the wax in these uh, tuning slugs. So if you know they have to be adjusted, you have to remove this wax and uh, clean all that up to adjust them. Hopefully it'll be pretty much spot on so we won't have to do too much adjusting on the I did notice that uh, the station I was picking up was not quite on the needle was not quite on so uh, maybe it won't be too bad to uh, take care of that now step four would be going in and cleaning any controls like the uh, headphone jack or the uh, potentiometers in here there's several potentiometers that would need to be cleaned and while you add it you notice all these switches are sealed switches so they're either going to work or not work you can take them apart clean them put them back together you know drill the rivets out put small bolts in uh, then you know going around and cleaning all the uh, wafer switches like here in the band select get all those contacts cleaned up they're looking pretty good um, good and shiny I don't see no black tarnish on them but they still you know will need to be cleaned also uh, you know getting around to the other side and uh, cleaning all the, uh, the shafts where they protrude through metal and uh, you know touching interference metal will need to be cleaned and lubricated So after you've done all your, you know, your step four and you got everything, uh, all the controls clean and lube, it's time to go ahead and remove the face plate. When you know, remove all the uh, control knobs, uh, clean those, clean the face plate, uh, get in here and really inspect the uh, dial string lube where the uh, controls come through the front, get all everything in there cleaned up. Make sure it's, you know, working good mechanically. I noticed that the band switch is really really tight so uh, that tells me that all those wafers need a good cleaning and uh, lubing that way you know everything will work exactly like it's supposed to so your next step after you got everything you know already tore down your cleaning uh, go ahead you should have your tubes out at this point go ahead and start testing your tubes and making sure that you know the tubes are up to spec where they need to be and uh, you know no problems with that on glass tubes check and make sure that the uh, 
base in the glass are, are good and tight and there's no uh, moving of the glass envelope in the socket also you know go ahead and clue, clean your uh, two pins get the pins good and clean and also in the sockets and I've shown in other videos how to clean the uh, two sockets good old pipe cleaners work real good too but there's a lot of different uh, ways on the market that you can get stuff to clean those with so the next step I take after all that is done everything is clean lubed everything is looking good all your controls are cleaned and lubricated is go ahead and start changing out all these little tiny cheap caps and the two electrolytic caps now there's several ways you can go about changing out the electrolytic you can buy a new cap from somewhere like uh, Hayseed Hamfest or you can take this cap out and restuff it there's only three in there so it would be very easy to restuff this or you can come over here there's plenty of room down in here to put a uh, terminal strip and capacitors just right here on this back wall now while you're changing those out it's good to go ahead and look at this uh, your power cord uh, as you seen in the schematic there is no fuse whatsoever and you have plenty of room on this back panel to go ahead and pop your hole mount your fuse holder change this cord out to a three prong cord uh, there's no wax caps across the cord which is good there is a ceramic 0.01 1400 volt cap sitting down here so you can go ahead and uh, put in some safety capacitors while you're changing out this cord once all your capacitors is changed out and you have your power cord changed out it's time to grab your voltmeter DMM whatever you have and start checking resistors now this radio has looks like mostly Allen Bradley resistors in it they are pretty good resistors but you know resistors do drift out over time especially high tolerance resistors so you know get in here start buzzing out these resistors change anything that's out of spec and that will help you tremendously when you go to start checking voltages after all your caps has changed out and your resistors have been checked it's time to uh, by this time you should have most of the radio back together it's time to go to your schematic and start looking at voltages now Halicrysers was nice enough to add a voltage chart and it shows all the tubes and the locations and they have all the voltage now you know thou shall check voltages so now it's a good time to go in here start checking the voltages if you see anything that's uh, really out from what it should be you can go ahead and pull your schematic and start troubleshooting through and find out why this voltage is down or, or missing or whatever and you know at this point you might find an open resistor that uh, you missed or something that's you know causing that voltage to be incorrect if the unit you're working on do not have a voltage chart in them it can get a little tough you can go into the schematic and you can uh, a lot of times voltages are listed in the schematics and in this case there's no voltages on the schematics because they provided the voltages on this chart and I've seen some radios that did not have the voltage on either one and then that's when a little bit of Ohm's law comes into uh, play you know search out the circuit and find out what the uh, voltage should be okay once all that done the next step is uh, you're ready to go ahead and start powering up uh, again use your current limiting device to power the unit up because uh, hopefully you haven't put something back in the wrong place or 
put an electric capacitor in backwards. If you have, this is when you're going to find out. So always inspect your work real good. Then it's a good idea to pull the schematic. Look at these three IF cans. Um, put your voltmeter on DC and check the secondaries and make sure you're not getting any um, voltage on the secondaries you know coming over from the primaries if you are that could be suspect silver mica disease you have a signal tracer you can also uh, check the secondaries with the signal tracer and you can actually hear if there's any problems with silver mica disease now once everything has been cleaned inspected lubed replaced repaired it's then time to grab your manual and go to your alignment section this is when you would start doing your alignment you don't want to align the unit and then start changing capacitors or resistors you want to do the alignment after everything else is done to the radio because if you go in and you change the resistor you could throw something off in the alignment so now is the time to go ahead do your alignment once your alignment done and still something is not working right that's when you can go back and start troubleshooting find out what's wrong with it and then finish your alignment on that section and move on to the next okay once the uh, alignment is completed and everything comes up and checks out like it's supposed to you know I always put it on an antenna and uh, just listen around the band and do anything and only after then if there was any modifications to upgrade now I'm not a big fan of doing modifications to vintage equipment unless it really really makes a big difference in the performance this is when I would go in and do any modification you don't want to be going halfway through recapping the thing and then modify something from its original circuit uh, reason being is you could cause some kind of problem that it's not going to show up when you go to start testing uh, you wait till after everything works then if you do a modification and then something doesn't work right you know then that your modification had a failure point and only then when I would do it the modification is after everything is completely completed in the radio. So I hope that these tips help you out. Uh, it's kind of funny in the last two weeks I, I got like seven emails asking what are the steps needed to take to do a restoration on uh, different types of equipment so that's why I mostly did this video so like I say you know I just hope that it helps you out it's not not very hard to do it's uh, just basic basic stuff guys nothing uh, you know magical about it it's just knowing the steps to go through the order to go through them in and like I say you know I've got seven emails in just the last two weeks on it so uh, anyway busy as ever uh, still a lot going on at work we do have a new manager new supervisor in place uh, that's allowed me more time to get back to my work um, that I should be doing in the facility but I'm still having to spend a lot of time doing this and that and helping out on some things until everything gets rolling uh, it is my promise to you guys that I will be back in the shop getting more work done and producing more videos and also I've said it several times about doing some videos on Patreon just haven't been able to get to anything um, but right now I have five other videos in the queue that's already done I just haven't had time to upload them you know get them edited upload and for you guys to watch but uh, I am working on that this weekend and this week I just want to go ahead and make this short little video and uh, I hope it helps you out hope you enjoyed it 
and if it did, you can always give me a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to thank all my Patreon supporters. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. Bye now.